Hi everyone <laughs> and surprise. Um, I'm pretty excited. This is my first live through a separate group other than 24 karat healing. Um, through healing begins where your ego ends group. I just thought I would jump on and I want to know, do you, are you guys looking for freedom? And now of course there are different types of freedom. There's financial freedom, there's emotional freedom, <laughs> There's mental freedom, and then there's spiritual freedom. Um, I'm talking about freedom from your ego, your egoic self. So if that's a channel through spiritual freedom, then that's what we're looking for. Um, now, I do uh, weekly uh, intuitive guided messages every week on YouTube. I do upload them through all my social media sites, including uh, 24 Karat Healing's Facebook page. So go check that out to get your weekly message. And I've heard a lot of great things already. A lot of it has resonated uh, with, <laughs> with many. And I always, we as the collective, uh, pick you know, a word for the, for the week. And the word was freedom. And when I heard the word freedom, I heard George Michael, which I, I love. He's near and dear. Um, bless his heart. He's no longer with us, but his music and his soul lives with us. Um, so freedom for me is freedom from self. And when I think of self, I think of the ego self. Um, unfortunately, we have been conditioned for most of our lives through uh, since we were born. We know that we're born perfectly. At least that's in God's eyes. And, and in your eyes as well, but somewhere along the way, as you're growing up, it gets instilled through work and family and friends and school, right? Um, I don't know about you, but many times I felt like I did not belong in school. I did not, I felt like I was in a dream. I felt like I, I was in imprisoned. I felt like I, nobody understood me. I was shamed and blamed and bullied and teased. That's because I had that inner light. And, you know, I'm sure you've heard this before, but if your light shines bright and it's there, even if you are having anxiety or depression, um, PTSD, whatever you may be suffering from or going through, the light, your inner light is always there. And it's the dark, the dark ones, the gray ones um, that, that spot you. It's like, you know, a moth to a flame, right? Same idea, moth to a light. Um, you're a shining beacon of light. So I just wanted to talk about how I can help you in this group. Um, what um, teachings are you looking for? What type of guidance? How, how can I support you? Please tell me how I can support you. Because I know my journey... Um, it's it's not as we talked healing and journey not linear it's <laughs> you got pe peaks and valleys and you know really the ego wants you to suffer the ego wants to keep you comfortable and what you know which is the outside world materialism other people's opinions <laughs> Um, you should be doing this. You should be doing that. Um, there's a, seems to be a lot of unworthiness going around as well. And I'm all about energy. Um, in fact, I you know I I thrive off of it. Um, being an empath, I don't know if any of you are. If you're an empath, let me know. Um, just give me a, a hand up, a heart, a smile. Let me know below. Um, just being, you know, in big crowds, being around negativity, and that includes family and friends, um, loud, a lot of, you know, if there's a lot of noise, um, fighting, any type of stressful situation, scary movies, movies that are intense, you know, that, that causes a lot of anxiety and anxiety is a big one. Um, and you know, when we talk about freedom, talk about I want to talk about detachment. I've seen that a lot. Oh, detach yourself. Oh, you know, just leave leave the situation. Just ignore it and just avoid See, that word, avoid. That's your ego, okay? Non-attachment is what you want to practice. And the term and the, um, you know, I, I looked, I Googled non-attachment and it says 
It's freedom from things. It is self-realization of the truth, of reality, that you, your consciousness, cannot be affected by anything or anyone. It is only the egoic mind that makes you believe otherwise. See where the ego is attached? Uh, wants to be attached to that non-attachment. Now, detachment means to distance yourself from the world out of total disinterest. Um, I used to think that way. I'd be like, oh, I'm just going to avoid that person or those places, those things. I'm just going to avoid, avoid, avoid. Or I'm aloof. It doesn't affect me. But deep down, it does. Don't bullshit, okay? It's an aloofness that separates yourself from the rest of the world. Essentially, it is escapism. So detachment is escapism, um, which is a form of suffering. So do we want to suffer anymore? I, I, remaining attached meaning you're not, you're not actually dealing and, and be, living in that energy. You are the energy. You set the tone. You set the pace. You decide here and here how you're going to be the observer and not react. And if you're finding things are triggering, there's still work to be done. And there's still work for me to be done. Gosh, <laughs> especially being, you know, in the social media realm, there's so many things. Um, and the more you talk about this stuff, spirituality especially, or even if you mention the word God and people are like, oh, she's a, there, here come the labels. Bible thumper, whatever you, whatever term you want, or she's lost her mind. <laughs> you're not crazy. You're rising. You're ascending. You're, um, you know, de not detaching. You have that non-attachment from the ego. See, I wanted to say it, but no. So non-attachment is essentially a practice of presence and mindfulness. It is not allowing our sense of well-being us to rely upon anything other than your own presence of awareness. Ooh, that's why I love meditation. Ah, even, you know, if you can find some other ways like hypnotherapy, tapping, whatever resonates with you to slow this down. It's, it's almost like watching something in slow motion instead of seeing everything rapid, rapid, rapid. Oh, I got to react. I got to do something. I gotta, that's, that's your ego. It's like, okay, let's go monkey mind. Let's go get crazy. You know, get anxious, get whatever it is. Let's, let's get her going. Let's push those buttons, right? No, not anymore. So it means to be in the world, but not of the world. And a practice of non-attachment, however, doesn't affect how you appreciate, how you love, admire, and enjoy life. It simply means that your happiness is no longer defined by anything outside of you. In other words, you remain free. You are free. Wow. <laughs> I, you know, I, I, I spent about an hour, no, two hours today reading, watching um, quite a few videos. I follow um, Michael Murdad, and um, he is like no other spiritual leader I've come across. He's real. Um, he has no ego. And he is not godlike. You know how you, you watch people and they think, you can tell they're full of ego right away. Being an empath... I can, within five seconds, I can tell right away if you're bullshitting me, um, if you're lying to me, um, your energy, when people say, oh, you know, I'm good. No, you're not. You know, that this stuff about just I'm good, you're, you're practicing detachment. You're just saying whatever to try and get out of whatever that feeling is. And really what we're looking for is connection with each other. That's why we're here on earth is to be connected with other people. Um, and I find even with social media, oh, we're all connected. No, we're not. We are not. Actually, we sit behind our computers and we become the judge, the jury, and maybe the executioner. Um, it's so easy to judge online. 
uh, and really catching yourself when you when you're noticing something coming up an emotion feeling jealous you're feeling um, unworthy you're feeling lost scared fear whatever it happens to be that's when you practice non-attachment it's pretty amazing um, so and I see um, you know meditation as a form of spiritual counseling with myself with self so let me know I don't know how many I mean there's a few people they're probably like she's live what's going on here she's never been live before not in this group particularly but in 24 karat healing so if you're here say hello um, let me know what you're doing um, it's very warm here I might look a little red I did get some Sun and I really try to stay out of the Sun <laughs> Um, well, get, get outside in nature, but not, you know, I'm not a sun worshiper by any means. So just enough to get the vitamin D levels up and uh, locked and loaded and ready to go. Um, so I, I was asking, what would you like help with? What are you struggling with? Um, what do you need support with? I know when I'm pretty much throughout my whole life, um, you know, there are certain key people um, that helped me along the way, but you know, I kept falling backwards and backwards and you know why? Because I, I was looking for outer Influences when I had everything I needed right here. I had to find it. You have to find it It's a journey. Um, I can give you lots of insights. I can give you ideas on how to get there Things that have worked for me might work for you might not work for you but I think the whole um, present, just being present for someone and holding space for them to be vulnerable, to feel that, you know what? And there's the empath empathy piece, empathetic empathy. Oh, hi, Kelly. <laughs> You're watching while dad gives kids a bath. Good for you, Kelly, way to go. <laughs> That's awesome, nice. Thanks for joining me, I appreciate it. You might have to go back and rewatch because I, Basically, we're, we're talking about detachment versus non-attachment equals freedom. And I always thought, oh, you know, being detached is like nothing bothers me. And it's mainly what the, the whole premise is detachment is avoidance. And non-attachment means that you don't need anything other, anything on the outside other than yourself. That's all it is. <laughs> Big difference. Um, so... And I, I did a little house cleaning as well. And then I thought, well, this is kind of like spiritual smudging. I mean, I don't really like cleaning, but I decided to flip the idea that I didn't like it into, hey, I'm cleaning the house and I'm going to clean my mind and I'm just going to do a spiritual cleanse. And you know what? It does raise your vibrations. You put some music on and it's, it's a whole total mindset. So since Kelly is here... <laughs> I'm going to ask you what what do you need do you, is there anything in particular you need help with um, I think there's a, maybe some people are confused what the ego actually is and it's or that it's bigger than it actually is it's it's not so I'm asking what you need help with how I can support you because I want to be that person that I needed a year and a half ago or for pretty much I'd say 44 years of my life um, I want to be you know that the confidant I want to be someone you can depend on rely on um, can know like and trust I mean that's at the end of the day there seems to be no trust anymore left there's always oh what's their hidden agenda um, and that goes back to your ego so somewhere in here somebody did something to you to make you not trust others and that doesn't mean you know if somebody needs uh to borrow money you give them everything you have <laughs> it means that you set some boundaries up and you still you help and you give and you you basically reap what you sow that that's how i look at it so um and you know <laughs> We want you to, you know, we're living in a 3D world, so there's a lot of illusion. 
and knowing who you are 100% of who you are is where you're going to find your truth so um, you know how growing up you're supposed to go to school and what are you going to do when you grow up and what's your career and you know why were we so obsessed with that and ooh, you make eighty thousand dollars a year you know what I've made six figures and I was freaking miserable okay so this idea that you have to make a lot of money or you need this um, big job like a CEO I could be a CEO but I don't want to be a CEO maybe a CEO of my own life spiritually of course so um, this is not me now and I don't care I, I really don't care I just want to help people um, it would be a falsehood to take a job that's not for me that's not me and because I get a lot of people that ask me where's what's my career what's my path what's my purpose um, you have to remember something you have to remember who you are so you say you want a career but what you really want to know is who you are. So you have to find your soul's purpose. And the same with relationships. Oh, he completes me, she completes me, I can't live without him or her. Um, again, that's an illusion. And your soul is too sensitive to bargain with who we truly are. So no more bargaining. We are exhausted. Part of us is praying for death, in a sense. So we can rest for a while because you're not honoring yourself and it takes a toll on your soul. Another soul sucking job, another soul psych sucking relationship that doesn't serve you. Okay, you're bargaining yourself away. No more. <laughs> Kelly says, I'm honestly not sure yet. Okay, well, when you think of it, send me a message or comment after you've watched the whole thing and then it might come to you later, right? It's like, um, you know, when someone asks you, or oh, do you want to do this or make a decision? You have every right to say, you know, I'll get back to you on that. And that's all you have to say. And there's nothing wrong with that other than feeling, oh my God, I have to make a decision. I have to, no, who says you have to? There's no have to's. There's just, you know, yes or no, or I'll get back to you. So either, you know, first you form habits or your f habits form you. So <laughs> I've had to look into that as well. And there seems to be, you know, I going into past lives as well. Through my family history and lineage, I have learned through Akashic Records that our family has an un inherently unworthiness, meaning I had people pleasing syndrome in the biggest way possible. Um, it was easier to help other people and solve other people's problems and not work on myself. Now there's a balance. I'm working on myself while still helping others and we're learning from each other. And it's pretty amazing. That's the kind of community I want to have. That's something I never had. Um, so we want you to start now and not look back and and what are you involved in right now that's not you so make micro adjustments just little adjustments put a deadline on things that are not serving you right now okay what what should be serving love peace and joy not stimulation or anything any type of drug or whatever it is that numbs you because when you're numb that is a form of escapism and detachment so insanity is listening to the illusions of this world insanity is listening to the illusions of this world turn on the TV there's tons to go online there's tons you know the the filters and the selfies and the Instagram and have 10 million followers and and what does that get and what does that mean it means absolutely nothing that means you're looking for outside things to replace inside things that are broken and you know so just retire your your boss your friends family anyone who triggers or brings up the stuff inside of yourself so just um, just love and learn basically love and learn and don't repeat <laughs> unless it's something you like to do 
Um, and it goes back to, you know, being a child, asking more questions. Don't you just love kids? There's no filter on them. And somewhere along the way, we lost our filters as adults. Maybe Kelly can resonate with this a little bit. So if you're if you're saying, oh gosh, I have no money and I'm so mad and, and so angry and your kid goes, money, why is that? Well, it's money, I need it. Money is everything. Well, what, what is money, mom? Well, it's a form of paper, like a currency. So the kid goes, so you're mad at paper? You're letting paper control your life. You know what? Kid's got a point, right? Ah, so, there's just a lot of contradictions and falsehoods. So same with, you know, if mom, mommy and daddy broke up and mommy's crying and the kid comes along and says, mommy, why are you crying? Because daddy doesn't love me anymore. And the child says, but mommy, you taught me to love myself. Isn't that true? Holy crap. You learn a lot from kids. <laughs> really, truly, more than anything. So learn to see through the hypocrisies. That's, um, things just don't have importance anymore. Um, so that's why we're talking about non-attachment versus detachment. Be more childlike. Ask questions. Why is that? Why do you feel that way? It just, you know, start a conversation with someone. And, you know, it really it would shut down the, because we go, tend to go into armor mode when, when people feel like they're being attacked. Um, when they, <laughs> we're definitely in defensive mode a lot. Um, I know I was, I always felt like I had to armor up. I'm sure you've heard that before, but, um, so let me know if any of this resonates. Um, like I said, if you're looking for help on anything, support guidance, I also offer a 15 minute intuitive coaching call. Um, it's, most times it's 30 minutes, so why, I should just say it's a 30-minute intuitive coaching call. And it's complimentary, mm. no strings attached. And look at that, my mom is calling me right now. <laughs> Anyways, talk about mom long enough, she calls, right? <laughs> um, so I offer that. Comment below if you'd like a link to book a call. Um, I'd love to help. I also do um, distance Reiki healing every Sunday at 8 p.m. Mountain Standard Time because I'm in Edmonton, so we're all over the world, right? And um, other than that, uh, just let me know. So basically, we want you to go vertical. <laughs> healing, like I said, linear. We want you to go vertical because vertical is the light. So think of yourself that you want to become your light body self and not your dense body self. Dense means attachment, ego, illusion, 3D. So if you want to renew or rebirth yourself in a sense, be careful what you ask for. Are you ready for the child? Can you nurture the inner child? I, I, I'm doing it every day. Some days are better than others. But at least I have an awareness and that's what I want everyone else to have. I want them to have their own awareness, an epiphany, an aha moment, a light bulb, a ton of release. And it takes time. You've shut my ego. Okay, sorry. Kelly is saying she has a new one. She shut. I've shut my ego off on this and I'm also being told defending is my ego. I see how it is ego, but I'm at a contradiction due to my teen's having feelings and expressing those feelings to family, which in turn, haha, ha, you're going through this right now in your video, haha. Ha, so, <laughs> um, yeah, uh, you're having contradictions, do your teen having feelings? Yeah, and, and that's the other thing, you know, teenagers, they, they're going through a lot as well because they st they're growing. They're, they're kind of in between the adulthood and the childhood. So yeah, and then you got hormones involved there as well. So there definitely is no filter. If they feel, I know for myself growing up, if I felt like I wasn't understood, um, that there was no empathy in the home, um, if there was no connection, I didn't feel like what I said mattered, then I would shut down. And then I would find other ways <laughs> to release that. And 
unfortunately it was alcohol. There was, you know, lots of boys and I found external things to fill up stuff that was missing. So just try and be there and um, with teenagers, especially with my boys, they're grown up now, but I always say if it's not, it's not illegal, they didn't do anything illegal. They're not hurt. They're not bleeding. Um, what's the worst thing that could happen? A lot of times you have to let it go. Just let it go. Um, unless you notice that they're really um, suffering, then of course try and have build that bridge with them and try to have a connection, I guess, is the biggest thing. So uh, so I hope that helped. Now I'm I'm gonna finish reading. Every Kelly continues. Every single time I don't feel the accusations are real, but damn it, here comes my ego to defend it because I don't feel because I don't feel those accusations are true. So here comes ego and believing what she feels she thinks is yeah. I get that. You know what? Honestly, I feel like it's a um for me, what I feel off of that is she is or they're, they're not feeling validated. They're not feeling like they have a voice. They are feeling hurt. There's a lot of hurt there. So we got to find out where this hurt is coming from. Um, that there's some type of injustice. I know a lot of times I felt injustice and boy, I would just suit. I, maybe that's why I've got this tattoo. It's my spiritual warrior. Like I literally put on the helmet, got the sword, got the, you know, I'm, I'm ready to fight. Everywhere I went, I was in a fight. And now this is, <laughs> I'm not fighting anymore. I'm just being, what, what a difference. I mean, if you had seen me, I'd say six years ago, <sighs> night and day, I had the biggest chip on my shoulder. I carried the, the world on the back, uh, you know, because you get a lot of um, stress here as well, it carries. Um, and it, it, once I let go and open up spiritually, holy crap. It was like my body, every cell in my body was this tight. So when I released and let go and started healing, that's where I had all my um, medical issues because my body just said, okay, finally I can breathe, I can relax. Guess what? Guess all this shit that you're holding on to? Guess what? It's coming out and, you know, I had the fibroids, I had that surgery, I had a blood clot, and here I am. I'm still here. So <laughs> there's a reason for everything, I honestly believe. Um, and honestly, I believe I'm, I'm here. I, you have a purpose. I have a purpose. Um, and I just want, you know, you know, there's a, there's a saying, the cave you fear to enter holds the treasure you seek. Isn't that amazing? It's kind of like that Star Wars. I don't know if anybody watched Star Wars, but, um, growing up I did. I was a big Star Wars fan. When Luke goes into the cave with Yoda, or Yoda says, you must go in there, but you won't need your lightsaber. <laughs> there was nothing in there. The only thing that was in there was fear. And it came out through, you know, him seeing Darth Vader, even though Darth Vader wasn't there. So anyways, um, so if you own the fear, you find the cave, you write a new ending for yourself, for the people you're meant to serve and support, and for your culture. So choose courage. This is from Brené Brown as well. Choose courage over comfort. Choose whole hearts over armor. Remember we we're talking about armor? Whole hearts. And choose the great adventure of being brave and afraid at the exact same time. Love it. Anyways, uh, you know what? It is like, um, I don't know, what would it be? Almost 90 degrees Fahrenheit here and I need some water. So close to 30 or something like that. I, this is amazing. Thank you, Kelly, for joining me. And for anyone else who does, just comment, uh, replay, share this out with your friends, your family, maybe even people you're not really sure about that might benefit from this. And I want to wish you guys love, light, and blessings. And there's also a contest uh, pinned at the top of 24 Karat Healing page if you want to go back and have a look. I'm still waiting to hit that 300, so share, share, share. And remember, healing begins where the ego ends. Take care.